أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله الحمد لله يستعينه وأستغفره وأستهديه وأؤمن به ولا أكفره وأؤاد من يكفر وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسول أما بعد بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وقال ربكم ادعوني استجب لكم صدق الله العظيم I seek refuge with Allah from Satan the rejected in the name of Allah who is most gracious most merciful Alhamdulillah once again we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for sparing our lives and giving us the help and guidance of coming out and offering our Juma Salah. Praise be to Allah, who has created man from water. Then he established relations of lineage and marriage, for he has power over all things. And I bear witness that there is no God but Allah, who create mankind from a single person, and create of like nature his mate, and from them both spread countless men and women. Praise be to Allah, the one, he begets none and was begotten by none. And there has never been anyone co-equal to him. For him is all praise, he is the great bestower, the originator of the heavens and the earth. Of everything he has created, peers, he is most worthy of devotion. He is the most compassionate of those who are masters, the most generous of those who are asked for help, and the most bounteous of those who give. I bear witness that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his servant and messenger. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shower his blessings on our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the unlettered Prophet who affirmed the faith in Allah and his book. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bestow upon him the best of his mercy and give him eminence over all people on the day of judgment. Alhamdulillah, my dear respected Allahs, my dear brothers and sisters. From last week's khutbah, I have taken only one, you know, one small portion of that khutbah. And that is the dua. Today, my khutbah will be strengthening of our dua, which is very important. I guess that every Muslim face this problem. They feel that their dua are not accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There might be some reason and that we are not making dua the right way, which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will accept more fast. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Holy Quran, أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وقال ربكم ادعوني استجب لكم and your Lord said call on me and I will answer your prayer this ayah is taken from Quran chapter 40 ayah 60 immense or immersed as we are in this materialistic world, many of us forgot that material causes 
do not produce the desired effect independently of the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We forgot to achieve total reliance on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we often neglect the, to implement the moral causes for achieving our goals. My dear brothers and sisters, one such moral cause that has be, become forgotten today is the dua. The humble supplication of the believer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, even when it is remembered, it is not performed in the correct way and comes out weak. Or certain customary and cultural practice of the manners in which dua are committed by uh, our pious predecessors, we can strengthen and purify our dua by fulfilling the conditions for its acceptance and observing the manners of its performance. The second class of evil is the innovation or bidda. Iblis or shaitan loves bidda more than the butchery and disobedience because the harm of bidda is in the essence of the religion. Moreover, it is an unrepentable sin and is against the call of the messengers and is a call to the message different from the one conveyed by our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Bidda or innovation is a gate to kuf and shirk. Therefore, Iblis or Satan gains the performance of Bidda from a person and makes him one of the people of Bidda. He also becomes one of his agents and a caller of his. If Iblis fails and is unable to trap the servant at this class, and if he is one of those who were granted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the gift of the sunnah and hatred of the people of Bidda and error, he proceeds to the third class of evil which is the class of the major sins in their various forms. Iblis is very covetous of letting a person fall into major sin, especially if he is a scholar who is followed. Iblis is covetous of that so that he may repel people from him and spread his sins and disobedience amongst the people. He uses some people as his agents to spread the dispersing sins under the false pretense that this will help them to get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But in fact, this person is the deputy of Iblis without knowing it. My dear brothers and sisters, for those who would like abomination to be spread amongst the believers, there is a great torment in this life and in the hereafter, especially if they take charge of spreading about enormities, not out of advice, but by obeying Iblis and being his agent. At this, all this is to repel people from the scholar and from his benefit. Furthermore, the sins of this person, the scholar, even if they reach the sky are less to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala than the sins of those who would like to spread his sins about. The scholar's sins are the wrongdoing to himself. If he seeks forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and repents, Allah Almighty will accept his repentance and he will change his bad deeds into good deeds. However, the sins of those who spread about abominations are doing wrong to the believers by looking for their mistakes and by intending to expose them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is in close observation and he knows about this ambuquade. 
Nothing hidden in the chest or soul is hidden to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is all-knowing. If Iblis is unable to snare the servant, Al-Abd, at this degree, he moves him to the fourth class, or the major or the minor sins. These sins may ruin a person if they accumulate. That is why the Holy Prophet wasallam said, Beware of the minor sins, because the simile of the minor sins is like the people who went to a desert. Then he wasallam, mentioned a hadith, the meaning of which is that every one of them bought a stick of wood until they had kindled a huge fire. Just as the minor sins add up little by little until they become a major sin. The person continues taking the matter of minor sins easily until he considers them inconsequential. My dear brothers and sisters, a person who commits major sins but fears their effect is in a better condition than he is. If the servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prevented Iblis from trapping him at this level, he moves him to the fifth level. And the fifth level is to occupy him with permissible things that do not gain him reward or punishment. However, the punishment of this level is caused by passing the reward missed by being occupied with these deeds. If the servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has kept Iblis from succeeding at this level, and if he is careful about his time being covetous with it, knows the value of moments, and knows the value of, of what comes of comfort or torment, Iblis transfers him to the sixth level. For the sixth class is to occupy him with the deeds of lesser reward, to keep virtue away from him and to prevent him from attaining the reward of the favored deeds. My dear brothers and sisters, he, Iblis, ordered him to do good actions with less reward, if that includes leaving a better action, few people are aware of this. Because if a person feels a strong urge to some kind of obedience, he does not doubt that it is true obedience and that he is getting closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He never thinks that this call is from Iblis because he believes that Iblis never calls one to do good deeds. Therefore, he thinks that this call is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Actually, he is excused because he never knew that Iblis will call one to empty doors of good deeds, either to get him to one door of evil or to let a better deed than these empty deeds pass away from him. Brothers and sisters, this cannot be known except by a light from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A light he instills in the hearts of his servants. The way of the Prophet sallallahu wasallam, that is the source of this type of knowledge, is following our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu wasallam and taking care of his, uh, taking care of the levels of deeds with Allah, the deeds of his favored ones, the deeds more pleasing to him and those more beneficial to his servant, and deeds that have more nasiha, more guidance from Allah, his Rasul, his book, and his believing worshippers. Brothers and sisters, no one has this type of knowledge except the inheritors of the Holy Prophet wasallam, his deputies in the Ummah and his successors on earth. In addition, 
most of the creation is screened from this. Asking for a sin or to break the bondage of kinship, the Prophet wasallam said, any Muslim who supplicates to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in dua, which contains no sin or breaking of kinship, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give him one of three things. Either his dua will be immediately answered, or it will be saved for him in the hereafter, or it will turn away an equivalent amount of evil from him. The companions said, so we will ask for more. And he replied, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is most gracious. Brothers and sisters, the correct manner of invoking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is to begin with hamd and salawat. That is, exalting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and sending blessings upon the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Abdullah bin Masur radiallahu anh narrated, I was praying while the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Abu Bakr and Umar radiallahu anh whom were together. After I sat in the last tahshahud, I began with praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then I sent blessings upon the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And then I pray for myself. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam asked, and you will be given. Ask, and you will be given. So alhamdulillah, here in the ayah of the Quran, chapter 40, ayah 60, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says more or less here, call and I will answer you. I answer the prayer of every supplication. My dear brothers and sisters, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is most merciful. Here he is telling his servants, you ask of me and I am the one I will give. I know what is good for you and I will give you the best. If you ask for something and you don't receive it right away, then my dear brothers and sisters, your doa wouldn't go astray. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will, re, you know, reward you for that dua. Your dua will, inshallah, be accepted. And this is dua, my dear brothers and sisters, it is very simple. Here, the dua, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says more or less, the dua is the weapon of the believer. We live in a world you know, we have problems, we have difficulties, you know, but at the same time we have solution. We have commands from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala didn't place us and leave us here in this world to go astray. He sent his book, he sent his messengers, all these is guidance for the, human, the humanity, the humankind. My dear brothers and sisters, we have the Holy Quran. We have the ways, the tradition of our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Let us hold on strong to these. Let us read the Quran and follow the ways of our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Let us ask from Allah. Let us beg from Allah. And Allah is the one who knows our needs. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will fulfill our needs inshallah. Dua have certain times and the best time as the Sheikh was saying in last week that uh, when we in sujood, the best time is to ask at that time, that position. And there are so many different times. You know, we could ask. We don't know when, you know, this dua will be accepted. So my dear brothers and sisters, let us ask from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. One must not make it a habit to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala only at the time of trouble. But he must constantly remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in all circumstances. 
Abu Hurairah radiallahu an narrated that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Anyone who is pleased that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala respond to him at the time of trouble and distress should increase his dua at the time of calmness. So not only in times of troubles and difficulties, we raise our hands and we beg of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No, my dear brothers and sisters, at all times, when we are happy, when, uh, you know, we are cheerful, at all times we must remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And at the same time, we have to, you know, avoid making dua against our families, our wealth, and our children. Jabir radiallahu anh, narrated a hadith about a man who cursed his animals. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Who is this who cursed his animal? And the man replied, It is me, O Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Get down from it. Get down from the animal. Because it cursed and it must not escort us. Do not pray against yourselves. Do not pray against your children. And do not pray against your wealth. It might coincide with the time when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala answers what you ask for. So alhamdulillah, my dear brothers and sisters, here we have it. Let us make dua. There are so many, you know, dua we, of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, which he recommended for us. You know, there is dua for everything. You know, let us all try and go back to the traditions. Let us all try in our own way and follow the tradition of our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Brothers and sisters, Friday is the master of the days. And you know, Friday is a special day for us Muslims. Friday is the Eid of the week. And just a reminder, narrated Ali bin Abu Talib radiallahu anh, Ali said on the pulpit in the masjid of Kufa, when Friday comes, the devils goes to the markets with their flags and involve people in their needs and prevent them from the Friday prayer. The angels come early in the morning, sit at the door of the masjid and record that so-and-so came at the first hour and so-and-so came at the second hour until the imam comes out for the khutbah. When a man sits in a place where he can listen to the sermon and looks at the imam, where he remains silent and does not inter uh, interrupt, he will receive a double reward. <coughs> if he stays away, sits in a place where he cannot listen to the sermon, silent and does not interrupt, he will receive a reward only once. If he sits in a place where he can listen to the sermon and looks at the imam and he does not remain silent, he will have the burden of it. If someone says to his companions sitting beside him to be silent during the khutbah, he is guilty of idle talk. Anyone who interprets interrupts during the sermon will receive nothing, no reward on that Friday. Then he, the narrator says in the end of this hadith, I heard the apostle of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam say so. So alhamdulillah, my dear brothers and sisters, here we have it. When we come for the Friday prayer, we come and we fill the first saf. Right, we fill up the first staff, we fill up the gaps, and the brothers and the sisters who come in after, they will stay to the back. Not that when the khutbah is going on, the brothers from the back just pass through and they come right up to the front. 
brothers and sisters, we have a way. The way shown to us by our beloved Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Our beloved Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is not uh, with us anymore, but he has leave his teachings. He has leave his ways. Let us follow his ways, my dear brothers and sisters. Friday, every Friday, we must make it our duty to come early to the masjid. Come, sit down close to the imam. There is reward and there is blessings. And when the imam starts his khutbah, no one should be talking. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mercy on us. May he, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, open for us the gates of his mercy. May he, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, guide us to the right way. May he make good for us our religion, wherewith we are guided. This world wherein we live, and the hereafter where to is our return. Barakallahu lana wa alaikum fil Qur'an al-Azim. Wa nafana wa iyaakum bi ayati zikr al-Hakim. Inna hu ta'ala jawarun kareemun. Maliku barahu farahim. Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, in our mother who won a stain, who won a star of fear, who won Uminobi, won a Tawakaluale, won a Uzubila, him in Shururian Fusina, Wamin Sayatia Malina, Maya Hadihilla, who falla Mudilla, Wamayulil, who falla Hadi Allah. ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسول إن الله وملائكته يسلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد بعداد من صلى وصام اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد بعداد من قاد وقام وصل على جميع الأنبياء والمرسلين وعلى كل ملائكة المقربين وعلى إباد الله الصالحين برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين إباد الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإيسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفغشاء والمنكر والبغ يا إذوكم لعلكم تذكرون ولا ذكر الله تعالى أولى وأولى وأعز وأجل وأتم وأهم وأكبر أقم الصلاة بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والعصر إن الإنسان لفي خسر إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر